You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up? You are watching slash listening slash having a blast. Woo. Checking out the Command Zone podcast. I am one of your hosts today, Jimmy Wong, and I am joined by the one, the only, Truck Tie. Truck Tie. What's up, Truck? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Truck, All right. What do you do here at the Command Zone? Well, I am Josh's assistant, and I had the pleasure of doing most of the research and most of the stats for all the pre-con upgrades. So yeah. if you liked any of it, it was all me. It was you, all truck. <laughs> if you didn't like any of it, Josh made me do it. Yeah, there you go. Well, it's great because we are bringing in a lot of the different staff members to talk about how they would go about upgrading the pre-con decks. And today, we're talking about the... I'd grab it from the back. Riveteers Rampage. Ooh, Say Rampage. hello to my massive friends. That's the yeah, the keywords on the back. Uh, so this is the Jund Blitz Precon. We're going to go over the stats and talk about 10 cards we would take out, 10 cards we would add in for under $30 to take this deck to the next level. These are Truck's personal choices. Are you excited to talk about these cards? Oh, super excited. I think like straight out of the box, definitely not biased. I think this is the most like holistic deck wow the obscure deck was also very good so i can't wait to check out the stats and see where it's at but first let's talk about our sponsors channelfireball.com slash command make sure you enter that promo code either when you go to the url or at checkout and go buy some cards you're going to buy magic cards anyway if you want to buy some sealed product at great rates you're shopping directly from local game stores and you're also supporting them because they are accredited real marketplaces you're not going to get great great customer service as well as the fact you're going to get the cards you want and there's a lot of cards we're talking about today. Maybe you're going to want to brew around one of these cards. I know that I'm for sure building one of the decks uh, around the card that we're going to talk about today. So if you're going to do that, just go to channelfireball.com slash command or use our promo code at checkout and you're going to be supporting the show there. Another way to support the show is with Ultra Pro, Ultra Pro product. They make all the play mats, all the dice, the deck boxes, the sleeves that you see on game nights and also probably just at most every single game you play around the world, including the play mats we have here in front of us. Every time Magic has great art, what looks amazing on a play mat, blown up and full size size and the only place you can get a lot of that official magic art is directly from ultra pro so you can support your local game store or go to shop.ultrapro.com slash command and you can shop directly from their online store they've got tons of products there and they also have great deals all year round they'll do deals around the uh, the holidays and stuff so make sure you check it out there's going to be something on there I, i'm sure you you're going to be astounded by just the wealth of products they have for you to purchase and finally, direct way to support the show is Patreon, patreon.com slash command zone. We shout out one lucky patron every single episode. So this episode is dedicated to Tyler, Tyler Wigley. Wigley. Tyler, you rock. Thanks you for being a patron. We just revamped our Patreon as well, so make sure you go and check it out, all the new tiers. Okay, let's get right into it. Riveteer Rampage Precon Budget Upgrade Guide with Truck Tie. 10 cards in, 10 cards out, total budget of around $30. We usually leave the mana base as is. But before we get into it, let's talk about the cards that can also be your commander in the deck. There's two cards that are both Jund, one on the front and one inside, and then there's a two-color legendary creature. But they're all legendary, so we should talk about them. Let's kick things off with Henzi, Toolbox Torre. Truck, why don't you tell us what's up with, with Henzi? Yeah, so Henzi, Toolbox Torre, love the name. Um, costs a black, red, green. So for a total of three, he is a legendary creature. Devil Rogue is a 3-3 three, three, and has the text, each creature spell you cast with mana value four or greater has a blitz. The blitz cost is equal to its mana value. So blitz is a new mechanic this set and it has the text. You may choose to cast that spell for its blitz cost. If you do, it gains haste and when this creature dies, draw a card. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step mm. so very similar to um an old mechanic like rush but main difference is instead of getting it back to your hand it just sacrifices it and you get a card yeah not only that the the text when this creature dies draw a card is imprinted on the card basically and then there's another trigger delayed to second that end step so even if you get around that death trigger the card still has when this creature dies draw a card on it forever which is really cool yeah it's phenomenal until uh, it dies of course yeah uh later in the podcast we're gonna be talking about a card i really like that has a lot of cool synergies with that mm -hmm. but yeah it's it's just so cool um and that's not even all there's more words on it it's so good henzi also has the text Blitz costs you pay costs one less for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. So instantly, everything costs one less to blitz out. So if you have a four mana value spell, let's say it's three and a red, now it costs two and a red to blitz out because you've cast Henzi at least once. Let's say you cast Henzi twice, now everything costs two less? 
That's so good. Typically, the mana uh, additional mana you pay when you cast your commander multiple times with the command zone hurts. But in this case, you're actually doing it to gain mana back in a weird way. Exactly. I've, while um, goal fishing a lot of hands, I I love to imagine someone just blows up my commander. I'm like, perfect. You, <laughs> you played exactly into my hand. Amazing. I, I get more discounts. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so Henzi Toolbox Torre is the front-facing commander for this deck. There is one commander on the inside that has a lot of players excited, myself included. In fact, I play this commander on the next game nights. Uh, actually, may have already come out at this point. You may have seen me uh, play with it. But it's the Beamtown Bullies. This is one, a black, a red, and a green for a 4-4 legendary creature, Ogre Devil Warrior, with Vigilance and Haste. And you can tap the Beamtown Bullies, target opponent whose turn it is, puts target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under their control. It gains haste, goad it. At the beginning of the next end step, exile it. So I can't use this on my turn if it's an opponent. I tap the Beamtown Bullies. I give them any creature from my graveyard as long as it's non-legendary. It gains haste and it's goaded, so it has to attack this turn and attack someone other than me if able. And then at the next end step, it gets exiled. So very interesting. You're taking a card out of your graveyard and then it's going to get exiled at the end of the turn, but that thing has to swing at someone. So there's obviously a lot of really, really mean things you can do with this. If you give someone a card called Leveler, that's you, the, that's it's so very mean. mean. It's a five mana creature, artifact creature. When it enters the play, when it enters the battlefield, remove your library from the game. But you're never playing it. You are tapping the Beamtown Bullies and giving it to your opponent. And so they exile their entire library. They basically lose the game uh, if they have to draw a card, which will happen the next time it gets their turn or someone draws them, makes them draw a card. Real rough. I mean, I'm not going to like... You, can't, thing, you can even upkeep them with Leveler. You can untap, upkeep... Tap the beam tempo, let's give them lever, they go draw a card, they lose the game. I I don't even think you could be mad. Like you lose <laughs> you lost to a guy playing leveler. Like I'm not even mad. That's just cool. Can you be mad if I play Eater of Days on you? So I use Beam Town Bullies, tap it, Eater of Days, when it enters the battlefield, you skip your next two turns. Okay, let's be reasonable, Jimmy. I like my turns. Let's let's You do get a swing with it maybe as a nine eight flying trample with haste thanks to the Beamtown Bullies. But yeah, you can also use Inverter of Truth, which is another version of Leveler. So it's really, really good. This card to me is hilarious. Um uh, obviously it requires a deck to I think be built around it. Um but you're just doing crazy things like Soul Gorger Soul Gorger Org. It's like this random three red red six six trample nightmare org. When it enters the battlefield, you lose all but one life. And then when it leaves play, you gain life equal to the life you lost when it came into play. But here's the thing you're bringing them to one. They could just die to a bunch of different ways. <laughs> yeah, you have like, you know, the greatest red card of all time, Lightning Bolt. They're dead. Yeah, you could even gut shot them if you wanted to. Uh, there's lots. The there's pingers as well. If you're playing against Josh Lee Quiet, there's a chance that he can just kill you with Soul Gorger or Orj out. Um, you can also do crazy things like, you know, Entomb and Bury Alive just to get it in there faster. So I really, really, really like this card. Um, but it's just another commander option in the deck. Pretty cool. All right, the next card... You want to read it? This one's a lot of fun. This is actually the commander that Ned Fulmer played in our Game Night Streets of New Commander episode. Yeah, this card's really cool. So, Jolene the Plunder Queen, two red and a green, so four total, for a 2-2 legendary creature human warrior, has the text, whenever a player attacks one or more of your opponents, that attacking player creates a treasure token. If you would create one or more treasure tokens, instead, create those tokens plus an additional treasure token. Wow. And then lastly, sacrifice five treasures, put five plus one plus one counters on Jolene. Okay, so this is like Zorn, which doubles up your treasures as well, but a little more political because it's wanting your opponents to attack each other because you get to make a treasure when you do. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm a little hesitant on this card. Like, it might be talking to Shauna getting to me, but like, I don't like the idea of giving my opponents treasures. No one does. Yeah, like, <laughs> treasures are good. I, I would be a lot higher on this card if it was a lot more like... Um, what was that Orzov political Strixhaven commander? Uh, Brina. Brina. Oh, Brina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Demagogue. Yeah, where like if someone attacks your opponent, you both gain beneficial effects. I see. But in this case, it's just the player. Yeah. The idea being that Jolene makes everyone else go at each other. Yeah. And they get treasures. But you're right. You are ramping them. Uh, I think this is definitely a slightly more fun casualness because, you know, the last ability is make Jolene really big, put a bunch of plus and plus encounters on her. So that's not crazy powerful necessarily. Definitely. Um, but maybe you could just fling Jolene at someone after sacrificing a billion Ooh, treasures. Or yeah. you could use those billion treasures to win the game in any number of other ways treasures are powerful yeah like that middle line of like if zorn could be your commander like that's not bad and you get green which you know green's good 
Yeah, very good. Okay, cool. So Jolene, the Plunder Queen, is the last legendary creature in the deck that you could potentially play as a commander, but you have to change the deck because uh, you can't play black anymore. Yeah. All right, now let's talk about the... Stats. 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 That's what I major in. Oh, statistics. Yeah. All right, well, why don't you lead it off and tell me how many ramp spells are in this Jun deck? Oh. Sorry, in this Riveteers deck. My... Respect to Riveteers. Um... I am so happy to say there are not 14, not 15, but 16 pieces of ramp in this deck. That what? is exceptional. Uh, I was going to say excessive, but I guess exceptional works as well. I, here's the thing. You're trying to cast spells that are four mana value and up, and you're trying to blitz them out. That's a lot of mana, so having a lot of ramp makes a lot of sense. Yeah, from gold fishing this deck, um, I think this deck gets fully online when you can double spell in a turn, and both spells are really impactful. And right. you know what you need a double spell, Jimmy? Mana. Yeah, mana. Six to seven to eight mana around that to get the double spell. Um, so that's a lot of mana, obviously. You're going to need to get to that soon, so the ramp helps out quite a bit. And card draw wise, there are eleven sources of card draw. Another great statistic. It's um, fantastic. Very, very good. Yeah, Jund, Black, Red, Green, Riveteers. These colors are known as just being the absolute value monsters of Magic: The Gathering. So if you're playing these colors, you're going to get a lot of good options in terms of card draw and ramp and all that stuff. Because uh, single target removal as well. Eight spells that do it. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yep. And then four board wipes or sort of wipe-esque cards, which is a little on the low side these days, which I think is fine, by the way. That number's been going down in favor of single target removal going up. I'll say a lot of the board wipes in this deck aren't, like, super great. Like, best one in here is Blasphemous Act. Mm -hmm. It's just phenomenal red board wipe, probably the best one there is. But, you know, a couple of the other ones are very situational, but, like, Not it's, so it's in a good spot. It's okay. in a good spot. It's yeah. All right, let's talk about the cards that support the commander's strategy here. How many big creatures are in this deck? Oh, if you like big big chonky creatures this is the deck for you we have 13 big creatures yowza yeah and when i say big i mean like well we, we categorize them as four cmc and above because you know that's what works with henzy um but these are all creatures that come in with really powerful etbs really powerful death triggers really powerful attack triggers like this is every card you wanted to play in any other deck <laughs> All in this deck. Yeah, and you get to cheat the mana costs uh, a little bit as well, thanks to the commander. And then you have big creature payoff and support for those big creatures because, you know, they're big, they're chonky, they're thick. They need some help. 21 cards that do that? 21, Jimmy. Wow. Super good, super and good. And then cards that say blitz on them or have something to do with blitz, four. But that doesn't seem, again, because it's a set-specific mechanic, you're more caring that it's adding, that Henzi's adding it to the cards. Very similar to how Marchesa gives your creatures dethrone. You're not looking for cards that help you get dethrone because your commander's doing it already. Sure. So that number at four makes a lot of sense to me too. Yeah. Okay, so let's take the deck value now into consideration. We always do this. Uh, this is the thing that you sat there and you did all the numbers. How do we do this for each deck? So... I, at, I think, earlier this month, around, like, early April, I mm -hmm. just sat down, took all of the reprint values, so all the, uh, none of the new cards, um, and I took all their prices before the decks were announced. Yep, because obviously those change, and we also don't know the prices of the new cards because they've never been in the public before, so who knows what they value them at. Exactly. So we only do we only count up the cards that are the notable reprints, as well as get the total reprint value. And it ended up being in this deck, eighty six bucks and seventy one cents. So this is about average. The average pre con re, uh, pre con reprint value for the last few years has been around eighty dollars. And again, this doesn't count new cards. You know, you could have a dockside extortionist maybe simmering in your decks in your uh, pre con somewhere. Um, I wish this had a dockside. Oh, yeah, Dockside would have been good. Look, Dockside would be good in any deck. But. Uh, there are many mixed opinions about Dockside. The fact that it's only been printed once is definitely the biggest bummer. Yeah. Uh, but $86 is still not bad. It's always good when it's above average. Okay, well, let's talk about the cards $5 worth or more. Uh, these are filter lands. These are, I believe, in all the pre-cons. It is a great addition. It's a land that you can tap to add for colorless, or you can tap a uh, color of black or a green for Twilight Mire to add black, 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 green, or green, green. Yeah. When you're in black, when you're in green, those colors have a lot of multiple of their mana pips in each, in each thing, uh, including this next card yep. so that being able to filter your lands into getting the color combinations you need can actually be really helpful especially in three color decks yep next card always a bomb in any deck avenger of zendikar very nice yeah it was like six dollars this thing has been climbing back up in price it's just a powerhouse and it yeah. makes you tons of creatures when it comes in the battlefield you're never sad to see it never sad to see it next up we have crush the blood braided this is one of craig blanchett's earliest commander decks if you believe it or not 
guess what he did to the creatures after he gave them plus one plus don't encounters? Say, don't say the I word, Jimmy. Yeah, he gave them a lot of <laughs> in fact. mirth and oh. cheer and happiness and in fact. Dang it. So Kresh is, uh, basically cares when other creatures die. You put plus one plus one encounters on them equal to that creature's power. Any creature, by the way. So Kresh can just get massive. It's a classic Jun commander. And then let's talk about the cards that were under uh, $5, but above $2. This next one actually really close to $5. I think this card is actually very good and could see more play in the future. Yeah, I think in a super optimized version of the deck, this card becomes so, so much better when you right. start. Because you can blitz it out. Oh, yeah. It is World Shaper at a whopping cost of four forty nine. Yeah, but only three and a green yep. to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Want to read it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. so good. Yeah, World Shaper, uh, three and a green for a 3-3 three, three creature merfolk shaman. Whenever World Shaper attacks, you may mill three cards. Don't care about that so much. When World Shaper dies, though, this is the spice, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Very nice. So yeah, if you're playing lots of fetch lands and lots of you know ghost quarter type things, right, you're going to get all those lands back onto your battlefield. And if you blitz out... Uh, World Shaper, it dies at the end of turn, and then you're going to get all those cards instantly. And you're going to be able to attack with it, so you get the mill, too, so you get every part of this package. Yeah, and, like, the mill is not insignificant. Like, in yeah. a lot of the changes I'm going to do, we're going to focus on a lot of, like, graveyard synergy. The mill is very relevant. Very relevant. Uh, we also have Kessig Wolf Run. This is a classic land that adds Trample. It killed me one time in Game Nights. Very sad. Yeah, it was, yeah, was kind of funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. A little funny. But it was sad. Yeah. I wish it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, next card, uh... Mitotic Slime costs $3.26 right now. Yeah, this is kind of like the ooze, uh, one of the like classic great oozes. One of the great oozes. Yeah. And it's another great card because when it dies, you make two 2-2 two, two green ooze creatures. And when they die, they make two one ones. Yeah, so you're just blitzing out a creature, but now when it sacks itself, you still have a board. Not to mention you draw a card. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, we also have Teamer Sabertooth in here. Just a classic combo card. Really great in so many decks. Two green green for a creature cat. You can pay a one in the green to return another creature you control to its owner's hand. And you give the Teamer Sabertooth indestructible, but who cares? Yeah, great card. Yeah, good uh, for rebuying stuff. Next card, one was I, was I was talking about earlier, Blasphemous Act. Costs $3.11 right now. Just fantastic. Yeah, this is a card that, thank goodness they're reprinting it. It's I think it's the best board wipe in red. You definitely want to pick up this card uh, and put it into so many different decks that it, it will almost always get rid of everything. Uh, yeah, if I have a red deck, this is one of the first cards I put in it. Yeah, I also forgot to mention Teamer Sabertooth is really good in this deck because you can pay one in the green to bounce a Blitz creature. You no longer have to sack it. Yep, that's a really good point. Yep, and then the last two cards we have are Felwar Stone, classic mana ramp, and then Woodfall Primus. Wow, another great card in this deck. Five green, green, green for a trample. Six, six, one enters the battlefield, destroy target non creature permanent, target non creature permanent, and has persist. So when it dies, it comes back to the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter on it. And then you get to destroy another one. Blitz that sucker out. One mana reduction when you cast your commander. Seven mana Woodfall Primus X2. And you draw a card. Get out of here with that. So those are the reprints. Pretty good cards, actually. I play almost all of them, except for probably Mitotic Slime. Yeah, uh, not too big on Mitotic Crush. Slime, but yeah. everything else. Everything else has really is in one of my decks, yeah. guaranteed. Okay, cool. So looking at the deck truck, who do you think you should be running as the commander? All right, look, Beamtown is really cool. Beamtown's super cool. But you're going to have to build it from the ground up. And this, as a pre-con, is just not set up for that. We're running Henzi. We're running Henzi. It's a three-mana Jun Commander. It's really cheap to get out. And you're going to be going off to the races the turn after you play it. Uh, it. You'll get all that Blitz value. Seems like a lot of fun to build around. And of the cards we just talked about, they all seem to synergize really well with it so far. Yeah. So let's talk about the best cards in the deck. Oh, baby. All right. This first card, I'm always super excited to talk about. When you play Magic. When mo <laughs> when I play Magic, what gets me excited, really cool, really splashy creatures, and nothing is cooler, nothing is splashier than a Tali Primal Storm. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah, a Tali Primal Storm is four red red for a legendary creature, Elder Dinosaur. Whenever a Tali Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library, then you may cast any number of spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. Wow-wee, so... Six mana by the by itself. If this thing swings, it is so bad for your opponents. I've had it happen to me like four or five times now, and every single time, I don't have the removal spell. Just yeah. incidentally, and no one else does either. Or someone just wants to see sparks fly, and boy, do sparks yeah. 
storm now actually. let, they let me tell fly. you something Jimmy. how many times have you played atali and you're like oh boy next turn when i get to hit with it it's gonna be insane yeah that uh that never happens yeah. actually that happens every single time we i was just talking about this uh, about with rex seal the hidden deep with with ashland yeah just one of those cards that when it hits the battlefield everyone goes nah we're not gonna let that come anywhere near us now Move it. now uh jimmy what if i told you it could hit right away because <gasps> you blitzed it out and you, it only costs you five mana to do so? It only costs five, you five wow. mana. It's so, it's so good. Now you do lose it at the end of turn. But, but you get everyone's card off the top of their deck. Pretty so darn good. good. So yeah. Good. Very, very good. In fact, it's so good also because of the second best card in the deck, yeah. which is Life's Legacy. It's one in the green for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, and draw a card equal to the sacrifice creature's power. So... When you cast Life's Legacy on a blitz out creature in this deck, not only are you going to draw cards equal to the power, you're going to draw an additional card because of the blitz text. So you're actually drawing X plus one cards for one in the green where X is the creature's power. That's really darn good. Yeah. On the Natali, you're drawing seven cards after you do this incredibly powerful thing. Seven cards! Yeah, very good. And the fact that you, you're allowed to do this, right? You, it's the way that the the blitz is worded. You have all these little loopholes that you can get in there and do stuff and sacrifice a creature and get some value out of it. It's so good, so yeah. good. Speaking of other ways to abuse blitz, we have a new card, First Responder. Ooh. It's three and green, so four total for a three three creature ogre citizen. Has the text Vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, you may return another creature you control to its owner's hand, then put a number of 1-1 counters equal to that creature's power on first responder. So you don't really care about those plus one plus one counters, but you care about the fact that you're bouncing your blitz creatures back to your hand. You got them back! Yeah, so both the triggers are going on the stack. One that one from uh, Henzi that says you have to sacrifice this creature because of blitz, and then the other one, which is first responder, you can stack it so that first responder's trigger happens first. <laughs> <laughs> And then that creature goes back to your hand. You don't draw the card for it dying, but you do get to blitz it out next turn or play it normally. Very, very good. I love that value. Yeah, Jimmy, all all these big creatures, they're they're like my babies. I don't want to lose any of them. Here, Indeed. We, we can bring them back. We can play them again and again forever. Well, here's the thing. If you do need to bring them back, there is another great card in the deck. It's Victimized, two in the black for a sorcery. You choose two target creature cards in your graveyard, sack a creature. If you do, return the chosen cards to the battlefield. Tapped. So again, you have that great blitz value, just like with uh, Life's Sloan nature's learned life's a legacy uh so that you're able to get two creatures back from your graveyard and you know that creature's gonna die anyway so you sack it yeah just don't let anyone remove any of your targets in response to you doing this because it will fizzle the whole spell yeah and you also sack the creature still that happened to me in game nights too i'm sorry jimmy yeah that no one deserves that no one does except for me apparently <laughs> all right there's so much more to talk about after i get out of this sad rut that i'm in including the cards we're going to add and take out of the deck so stick around and we'll be right back after these mid-roll sponsors greetings anointed ones i am temet vizier of knock the moon here on amenket summers are brutal so when the sweltering sun rises to its apex you must protect yourself from the infernal heat Thank the gods I have me undies to keep me feeling cool. Summer may be sweaty, but with me undies light and breathable micromodal fabric, your hindquarters can stay comfy and cool. They have delightful seasonal prints and many styles to choose from. Available from extra small to 4XL. Bring some tropical bliss to your butt with this festive pineapple print. And if you do venture out for a dip in the oasis, check out their new and improved swimwear styles, like these tropical toucans. MeUndies swimsuits are soft, stretchy, and sustainably made. Ah, finally the summer sun descends beneath the... Wait, hold on. We have a second sun? Are you kidding me? MeUndies has a great offer for fans of the Command Zone. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. If you sign up for their free-to-join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash command. Again, that's MeUndies.com slash command. Hey folks, it's Tireless Provisioner here. With me in play, whenever you have a land ETB, you can make either a treasure or a food. But let's be honest, no one wants to make food. And why would you? Between shopping, cooking, and cleanup, making food yourself is exhausting, especially in the summer heat. That's why I use Factor, the meal service that delivers fully prepped, chef-crafted meals straight to your door. Each Factor meal arrives ready to eat in just two minutes, and with no dishes to wash, the cleanup step couldn't be simpler. Factor makes it easy for me to eat clean 
24 seven with fresh, never frozen prepared meals that are so delicious you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. I could never get tired of eating their shredded chicken taco bowl. And not just because I'm tireless, it's because it's good. Factor offers 30 options each week, including vegan, keto, and low calorie meals. And I can make changes to my plan whenever I want. Now that Factor is handling the food, I'm free to make some treasure. But you know, maybe the real treasure was the food we didn't have to make along the way. Aww. Or maybe it's these tokens, I'm rich. Head to go.factor75.com slash command120 and use code command120 for $120 off. That's code command120 at go.factor75.com slash command120 for $120 off. Hey everyone, today we want to talk to you about our sponsor, Raycon Wireless Earbuds. Yeah, we've done a lot of really fun sketches about Raycons over the years, but we also want you to know that it's a great product that we actually use. Yeah, I listen to a ton of music and podcasts and Raycons are great while you're working out, or walking your dog. I'm sure you know that quality is super important to us here at the Command Zone across the board in everything we create and endorse, and Raycons really deliver. In fact, I like mine so much that I often give them as gifts to people, mm. like my nieces and nephews, because they want something cool, but they're also kids. Uh, so Raycons are perfect because they're inexpensive, even though they sound really, really great. And so when my nieces and nephews inevitably like lose or destroy them, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. In fact, it's almost good, because then I have something to get them for their next birthday or Christmas or whatever. <laughs> Well, seriously, though, at half the price of other premium brands, Raycons are the best bang for your buck. Plus, their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. So whether you're listening at work, the gym, or out in the world, they'll stay comfortable and never fall out of your ears no matter how much you shake things up. And Raycons have eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, so you can spend all day listening to whatever you want. Like your favorite Commander podcast. Yeah, or us. Hey, that's what I meant when I said Commander podcast. There's other really good ones out there. That's a good point. Right now, Command Zone listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash command. That's buyraycon.com slash command to save 15% on Raycons. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. All right, we are back talking to you about the Riveteers Rampage deck with Henzi Toolboctore on the front. Really cool commander truck. Let's talk about your evaluation of this deck out of the box just by itself and sort of what you thought about when you went to the experiment of how am I going to add cards to this and what I'm going to take out to make it better. Sure. So this deck really spoke to me. Since when I first... <laughs> wait, wait, did it literally speak to you? Like, truck, play me. Look, it was, it was a late night. Things were happening. <laughs> but... When I when when I looked at this deck and I saw the curve, the curve's pretty high. Like this this deck is very top heavy. So okay. the first thing I thought is you're gonna want ways to get a lot of mana really fast, and then you're gonna want good things to play when you have all that mana. And okay. this deck has all of that. Okay. Yeah. So you're just trying to sort of tighten it a little bit, make it a little more efficient, and do some crazy things in here. Yeah, not only that, right? This deck has a lot of value. A lot of value. But you can never have enough. We're going to add even more value. <laughs> a lot of my upgrades are going to be mainly focused around adding um, a graveyard recursion engine. Okay. So when all the, your creatures get sacked, you're right. That's super sad. You don't want to you see your creatures go away. I see. So we're going to get them back. We're going to play them again. And we're just going to outvalue all your opponents. That is the Jund Riveteer's way, I will say. Outvalue in the mid game to late game. Yeah. Sounds pretty spicy. Yeah. Okay, let's get into it. What is the first card that you decide to add? Yeah. So if you add nothing else, add this one card. It is Phyrexian Reclamation. Great card fantastic card love this card yeah so phyrexian reclamation costs just one black is an enchantment and it reads pay one and a black and two life return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand wow this is repeatable graveyard recursion mm -hmm. for two mana each time yeah very cheap one in the black and two life you definitely have the life obviously you're gonna want those creatures back and if especially if it's a tolly you get to play that again the next turn, and then you get the Frexton Reclamation back and do it again, potentially, that you're going to win that game. Yeah. Straight up. And like with the amount of mana that you're going to hope to be making with this deck, it's nice to have like a nice mana sink. Right. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, next up we got Body Snatcher. This is really cheap. It's only 77 cents. Uh, it's two black black for a 2-2 two, two minion. When Body Snatcher enters the battlefield, you may choose and discard a creature card from your hand. If you don't, remove Body Snatcher from the game. <laughs> when Body Snatcher is put into the graveyard from play, remove Body Snatcher from the game, exile it, and then return target creature card from your graveyard to play. Yeah. Okay, so when it enters the battlefield, you may, you should, 
You, you 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 need to like so the way this card is worded. <laughs> if you don't discard a creature or you don't have a creature this card, it does nothing. Yeah, it, it exiles and it doesn't get the death trigger. So you want it to die. So you have to play it for four and then you discard a card. But yep. when it dies, by the way, you're uh, blitzing it out. Yeah. So it's really gonna be three. Yeah. So you blitz this out for one black black because uh, hence you reduce the cost. What do you want to discard? Uh, What's your dream? Don't say Atali. We've said it too much. <sighs> Woodfall Primus. It's pretty good. With Vault Privacy, it's really good. Big boy. And j just a thing to point out, the card you discard doesn't necessarily have to be the card you bring back. So, ah, good point. Yep. Very good. So good point. let's say you have like, you know, it's later in the game, you have Mana Dork in your hand. You discard that. Woodfall Primus, pretty Still good. It? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you swing with Body Snatcher as it's blitzed out, gets sacked at the end of the turn, and then you get the Primus back on the battlefield or whatever it is. Wow. Forever. Yeah, forever. It doesn't even have the Blitz Clause on it. So I like that a lot, actually. That's a really sneaky, very interesting. I've never seen this card really before, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Super good in this deck. Yeah, next card, Malakir Rebirth. Big fan of this one. Yeah, MDFCs, super good. If you're not running them, you should be. Yeah, this is an auto-include in a lot of decks because it can pretty much outright replace at least one of your lands. Yeah, and like for $2 right now, that's kind of a steal. It's an uncommon too at two dollars, which means that it's a very good uncommon. Oh, yeah. When's the last time you've seen an uncommon like above a dollar even? Yeah. Yeah. So Malakir Rebirth cost again just a black. We're gonna be lowering that curve for an instant. Choose target creature, you lose two life until the end of the turn, that creature gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Very good. Now, Jimmy, do you have any idea how often our creature's gonna be dying? Pretty often, it would be. Pretty seem. often. Basically, every turn when we yeah. blitz them out. Yeah, yeah. And for one more mana, you get them back. Yeah, so, you get to buy them back. Yeah, for so all your ETB triggers, yeah. your death triggers, you're getting them again. And hey, that one mana, yeah, wasn't that the one mana you saved from Hensi? That's a good point. Yeah, so this card basically just lets you play the creature for free, gives you a free ETB, gives you a free death trigger, is also a land. What more can you ask for? Yeah, on the other side, it's just a uh, land that taps for black and there's the battlefield tapped. Yeah. Typically, you know, in an early game, if this is the first card you draw, you have to hit your land drop. Sure, you can play this. Sure. But late game, you draw this card, you are so very happy because it has extra utility and it doesn't take up a land slot. Yeah, the saddest you're ever going to be is, oh no, I have a land. Like, it's like, take it from Jimmy Wong. Take it from me. He's going to be happy to have a land. Okay, so this next one is the most expensive ad of all of them, but might be the single most important card in the deck. You could build, actually, this card and the combos it can do to have be an infinite win con, too. It's so yeah. Vala, Heart of the Wilds. This is a $10 card. It's a CEDH card. Uh, it's very good. One green green for a 2-3. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. So this just rewards you for playing the big stuff or blitzing it in. And we're definitely your, playing the big stuff. Your opponents, too, will also benefit off this if they play a big thing. And then, more importantly, bl uh, green tap Selvala. Add X mana in any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Yeah. So if you blitz this in and use this ability and you have like a 6-6 six, six out, you're adding 6 mana with it in any combination of colors, too. So technically, we can't blitz Selvala herself in because she's not for a cmc oh you're right i'm so sorry but but she's still super good yeah she's still insane because you play sovala and yeah. then you blitz out your six six or your nine nine and yeah. then you tap sovala for nine extra mana then you can really just do whatever you want yeah. earlier when i said this deck really wants to be double spelling sovala basically gives you a free double spell mm -hmm. right and remember when she taps it's in any combination of mana you want so if you play a tali which was a six six which costs six he's paid for himself if you have sovala on the board yeah yeah so that's very cool and again you're in the three color deck so you're gonna want to use a bunch of different colors here yeah it's just so good very cool all right this next card's hilarious i'm so glad you included it oh yeah gorex the tomb shell Cost big boy six black blacks for eight total is a uh, four four legendary creature zombie turtle has the text as an additional cost to cast this spell you may exile any number of creature cards from your graveyard this spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way yeah that's pretty you can get this thing down to black black yeah uh, also has death touch and most importantly whenever gorex the tomb shell attacks or dies which you'll be doing both of choose a card at random exiled with gorex and put that card into its owner's hand Cool. Now, question, can you get the additional cheap cost on top of the Blitz? You can, Jimmy. You can? You can, Jimmy. What? Because it just says as an additional cost to cast the spell. Even if you Blitz it, that is you casting the spell. Yes. So, in, like, this is the, like, 
average scenario, mind you, you have Henzi on board. You blitz this out, right? Yeah. Eight you, go again, so by the way, the text says you may choose to cast this spell for its blitz cost. So it is an alternate casting cost, but it's still you casting the card. Yeah. So you have Henzi on board. You blitz this out. Eight goes to seven. You exile two creatures in your graveyard. The seven, seven goes, goes to, to three. three. This is now three I, to blitz out. Yeah. You don't even care about the turtle anymore. When it attacks, you get a creature back. And when it dies, which it will at the end of the turn, you'll get the other one back. Wow. So even if you use three creatures, you're still getting two of the three back. Yeah. Now, maybe you don't want to risk doing three, but even two at five mana, that's really good. Oh, yeah. This is, that's basically three mana for a double regrowth. Yep. Very lovely. So good. Uh, this next card is one I think is, is one, just an incredible card for casual players. This could be another card that gets up there in terms of uncommons. Uh, worth a lot. It's Morbid Opportunist, two in the black creature, human rogue. Whenever one or more creatures you, uh, dies anymore, anywhere, by the way, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Jeremy, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think this card is really close to being the next Payless Plunderer. It is it, so oh, good. Pillars Planner, I think, is a very good uh, comparison to this. Pillars Planner is a little bit better, I think. Yeah. But yeah. Morbid Opportunist has just the ability to incidentally draw you at, at about one card per rotation, but you're blitzing stuff out, so you're definitely going to be drawing off it. Yeah. Yeah, great card. Yeah. Oh, this next one's great, too. Oh, yeah. Next, uh, I dare say, Jimmy, you could say it's even greater. Mm. Greater good. Tasty. <laughs> greater good is two green green for an enchantment and has the text sacrifice a creature draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power then discard three cards all right so again because blitz adds the text to the card and puts a delay trigger on the stack the adding of the text is when this creature dies draw a card so you can sacrifice it to a sack outlet and if you have a woodfall primus out if you have a massive crush the blood braided out you're drawing seven eight nine cards discarding three nine cards jimmy nine cards they're like discarding three is like pretty bad but with all the big creatures in this deck you're probably you are going to like full hand size almost every time you activate this yeah pretty darn good um very very good indeed so and you've got all these other uh graveyard synergies right with gorex yeah and body snatcher and stuff so yeah with these changes you are never running out of gas with this deck very cool. Goblin Arca Narcomancer is next. It's just red green for a 2 2, and each spell you cast that's red or green costs one less to cast. That's great. It's going to just save you so much mana. We've seen the medallions go up in price because they're just very good. And in a deck like this, this affects two colors, and it's just a red and green to put out. Really efficient ramp spell might end up saving you seven, eight mana over the course of the game if you get it out early. Just so good. You're like, like we've said so many times, you're going to want to ramp with this deck. This is ramp. And not only that, it's ramp that's hitting you several times every turn for every spell you cast. Yeah, you may actually have this uh, trigger twice a turn if you blitz out two things, right? Now you're getting everything reduced by two mana. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So good. All right, next card, Village Rite. Again, just a black for an instant as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. Yeah, instant speed, very good. This even protects you against someone trying to path your creature. You get a little extra value out of it. Sure. And then, you know, in our most common line, we're blitzing it out. The sacrifice a creature doesn't even matter because we're going to sacrifice it anyway. This reads a lot of the time, one mana draw two cards. Yeah, I, I like this quite a lot. It's one of my, I love these cuts cards too. All right, and the last card that you wanted to add here is Protean Hulk. Woo hoo hoo. Okay, all right. I have some caveats to make. Okay. Now, Protean Hulk gets a bit of a bad rap because like, uh, let's be honest, Protean Hulk combos with like a rubber band and a plastic spoon. Yeah. Like this thing is insane. And I think because of that, people hear Protean Hulk, they hear, they think infinite combos and they think, not really for me. <laughs> but let me, let me get you in on a little secret, Jimmy. Yeah. Value Hulk. Okay. Well, there is a ton of value stable on the Protean Hulk. So when it oh. dies, you tutor for any number of creature cards with total converted mana value of six or less. And then you go on the battlefield. Yeah. Pretty so good. Protean Hulk is just like, a 6-6 six, six, that when it dies gets you back a better 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. yeah. Or a 4-4 four, four and a 2-2, two, two, right? Or a 4-drop and a 2-drop. Yeah. Or a 2-3-drops even. You There's know, you so could, many good combinations. You could just straight up deck. get Salvala out. Or you could even pull your Morbid Opportunist, right? Yeah. So many cards we've already talked about would be very good to grab. Or just get a Tolly. Just get a Tolly. Yeah. Like a Tolly. So those are your 10 cards you added. They added up to $24.32. Yeah. <clears throat> you do have an honorable mention here. I'm surprised that you didn't put it into the main deck. 
Yeah, so I, I have a reputation around the office, and by reputation, I mean I really only pl ever play one deck, and yeah. that deck is Obeka, Brute Chronologist. <laughs> and this card is just Obeka on an artifact, Sundial of the Infinite. Oh man, I love this card. Yeah, you can only do it during your turn, but you tap one and tap it to end the turn. So you basically can stop any end step triggers from happening because you end the turn beforehand. There's lots of different things you can do here. Yeah, and the most important end step trigger you're going to be stopping every turn with this card, Blitz. Blitz, yeah, you don't want to sacrifice a creature anymore. Yeah, and not only that, like we were talking about earlier, the text on Blitz that says your creature draws a card when it dies, that stays there yep. even if you don't sacrifice it. Yep, so someone could board wipe the next turn, or you could attack and have it block and, get, and die, and you'll still draw that card. Yeah, love this card. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, and I have one last honorable mention to say. Oh, so, boy. everyone knew this is coming. This is a Jun deck. We've talked about sacrificing. Let's talk about Corvold for a minute. A minute? Well, how about 10 seconds? Corvold Fake Cursed King is like the Protean Hulk comparison. It combos with everything because you're sacrificing and drawing yeah. stuff. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Look, when I was when I was theory crafting this deck, I was like, okay, what happens if you put in Corvold? Then I'm like, better. it gets better. <laughs> the deck definitely gets better. And then yeah. I'm like, okay, let's make this swap to make the deck sack more. Then like, let's make this swap to make the uh, deck sack more. And then, you know what? Let's just replace the commander with Corvold. Like, yeah. Like, you know what? Fine. You can play Corvold in this You can deck. play Corvold. Only if you blitz it out. Oh, if you blitz out, I'm not even mad if you blitz out Corvold. Yeah, because you're going to blitz it out. You're going to sacrifice it when it enters the battlefield and when it attacks. You're drawing two cards there. And then at the end of the turn, when you sacrifice Corvold, you also draw a card. Yeah. <laughs> blitz Corvold out. You heard it here first. But you got to sacrifice him, and I never want to see him again. Yeah. All right, cards to take out. Sadly, yeah. the Beamtown Bullies is number one on this list because it's just not synergistic with what you're trying to do here. You don't want to be giving your awesome cards to your opponents. Yeah, we're trying to make the deck better here. Beamtown Bullies wants to give your opponent bad cards. There's not a well, lot of the... some builds want to give your opponents good cards and strike yeah, deals. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. But this deck needs way more than 10 cuts to or, or 10 changes to make Beamtown Bullies really, really efficient. Yeah, so we're yeah, just going to cut it. Yeah, I would say you're going to get hurt by this more often than not. Just make it your own deck yeah. instead. Next up, Weathered Sentinels. What? Yep. Well, this card kind of sucks. Yeah, like, uh, honestly, I'm not really sure why this is here. So it's three mana, has Defender, Vigilance, Reach, Trample, is a 2-5, and has the text, Weathered Sentinels can attack players who attacked you during their last turn as though it didn't have Defender, and whenever we Weathered Sentinels attacks, it gets plus three, plus three, and gains Indestructible until the end of the turn. It's not even a four drop, so you came and blitz this out. Yeah, like, so in my head, what I'm sure they were thinking of is, hey... All, so many of our creatures are four drops. We need like something in between to hold down the fort until we can get to the big four drop. <laughs> but like, you know the problem with this being a three drop? Our commander is three CMC. If you have three mana, you're going to want to be playing your commander, not this. Yeah, and you can't blitz it out again because it only cares about four drops and above. This is great in like an Audric deck. Oh, yeah. It's got three keywords and sometimes you get the indestructible one too. Yeah, or like Arcades. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next up is Dodgy Jalopy. Jalopy. I don't know how to say that word. Two and a green for a star five artifact vehicle trample. That's all you have to tell me. I don't like vehicles. Uh, its power is equal to the highest mana value amongst creatures you control. And you can also scavenge it. Two and a green to exile from a graveyard. You put a number of plus and plus one counters equal to the card's power on the target creature. So that's whatever. So, yeah. The only vehicles I like are trucks. Okay. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, why don't you read the next card, Truck? All right, next card. sigh the whole time. <laughs> next card. Uh, All right. <laughs> if you want to sigh, I will give you a reason to sigh. Next card we're taking out, and this is I'm glad to take this out. Aether Snap. Three black black for a sorcery. Remove all counters from all permanents and exile all tokens. Oh, it's good against token deck. Yeah, so, <laughs> like... If you are playing in a pod with every other precon, this is pretty good because there's another token precon and there's another counters precon. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't really like running hate cards that much, and I especially don't like running five CMC hate cards. That yeah, for sure, really aren't that good. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Bellowing Mauler is the next card. It's a four and a black for a four six warrior. At the beginning of your end step, each player loses four life unless they sacrifice a non token creature. They're going to choose four life almost every single time unless they're at like six life yeah. uh, or four life. This deck is not going to be aggro enough to put your opponent in a position where they're like, I really need that four life. Yeah, maybe one v one. It could be more interesting. Sure, but even then, you, you'd much rather blitz out any of the cards that we added in. Yeah. And then even <clears> if. Uh, Oh, yeah, this is end step. So you could blitz out and you get one trigger. You get one trigger off it, yeah, but that doesn't seem great compared to the other things we've got going on. Yeah. This next card hurt me a lot to cut. Um, 
it's not good, but it's so much fun. Yeah. It is Turf War, four and a red for an enchantment. Super cool text. When Turf War enters the battlefield, for each player, put a contested counter on target land that player controls. When a creature deals combat damage to a player, if that player controls one or more lands with contested counters on them, that creature's controller gains control of one of those uh, one of those lands of their choice and untaps it. So everyone gets a turf <coughs> contested counter. Whenever you deal combat damage to a player, if you control a turf land, then you can grab their turf land. Yeah. So basically, everyone has a land that is like up for grabs, and if you hit them like the monarch, you just get it. Yeah, but then and you untap it too. Yeah, <clears throat> but then like since you grab their lands, other people are going to want to attack you to get your lands. Now you have two of them. Yeah, it's it's really cool because it's going to incentivize the entire table to start hitting things, and combat is cool. Yeah, that is a really cool uh, design. It is five mana, a bit of a stretch, and yeah. like if if all you care about is like optimal power level. Five mana is too much to pay for this. Yeah. But would, it's cool. I would love to see this in action. Oh, yeah. And just see what happens. Oh, yeah. If if you <laughs> played this card, like, I'll, I'll give you whatever deal you want. This card's just so fun. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got Grime Gorger. Two black and the uh, green for a 3-3 three, three menace. Whenever it attacks, exile up to one card of each card type from defending player's graveyard. And you put a plus one plus one counter on Grime Gorger for each card exile this way. Yeah. It's like, okay. Uh, yeah, this this was probably the closest cut for me. Like, it's it's fine it's graveyard hate which is never bad um it's gonna grow fairly quickly but like at the end of the day it's just a beep stick mm -hmm. and we can do better than that for four mana yep all right yeah speaking of beep sticks i'm sorry craig we're gonna have to cut crush the blood braided ah uh, goodbye yeah. crush he is five mana and it takes a while to get him going you don't really want to blitz it out either yeah. so like the main problem with this deck is it's it, it, it's harder than you think to stick several big creatures on the board. Um, you can't, you don't want to blitz him out. So right. you need him to already be on the board and then something else to blitz out. And then he gets all the counters. And then the turn after that, he gets a little bigger. Like yeah. that's, that's too much of a weight. I'm sorry. Yep. Next up is Reign of Riches. Another uh, five drop, three red red for an enchantment. When it ends the battlefield, you create two treasure tokens. So it's kind of like it costs three. Yeah. And then the first spell you cast each turn, uh, when you use mana from, a, mana from a treasure to cast it, it has Cascade. Yeah. But you don't get to use the turn that comes down. You have to wait to your next turn or pass the turn and do it. Yeah, because um, this, even if this is your first spell, that was your first spell, you can't have it. I want to say I think this card is incredible. But in this entire deck, I think there are like three cards that make treasures, including Reign of Riches. Yeah, maybe Jolene's deck runs Reign of Riches instead. Yeah, play this and prosper. Yeah, and then the last card you cut, a seven drop. Yeah. Stalking Vengeance, five red red um, for a five five avatar creature. Has haste, and whenever another creature you control dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target player or a planeswalker. Okay, so I can see where, there is go where they're going with this, that you're going to yeah. want to blitz out your creatures when they die. Now they're also flinging themselves on the way out. Yeah. This card's super good if you can get on the board, but like, would you rather have this or two other creatures? Or just a Tali. Or just a, yeah. That's not fair. A Tali's <laughs> really good. We can't compare everything to a Tali. <clears throat> yeah, we can. Yeah. All right, so how does the deck play? You tested it out a couple of times? Yeah, a, a couple of times. Um, the deck, you're not going to want to hear this. I'm not going to want to hear this. I hate mulliganing. <laughs> you need to mulligan with this deck. You need to hit your ramp early. Like, if you need a mull down to five, you mull down to five. Wow. Like, you need a ramp turn two. At worst, you need a ramp turn three and get out your big mana as soon as you can because this deck takes a lot of mana to operate. Yeah, you can get your commander out early, maybe, uh, or just on turn three. It, it is tough. It's three colors. Yeah. But when it's out, you want it. Yeah, you want to ramp, 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 ramp so that you can blitz, blitz, blitz and really catch that advantage because otherwise your board state does look a little empty after each turn because your creatures are going away. Yeah, the, the ramp is the homework you have to do before you can do the really fun stuff of playing all your big creatures. Right, and set up some good graveyard recursion outvalue people with that judness and just smack them really hit them hard with your woodfall primus and everything yeah yeah all right pretty good stuff there truck yeah. uh, to the listeners if you're watching along you've heard a few of the pre-con episodes now what do you think about the riveteers pre-con would you be a riveteer in the families or are you, are you more of a maestro and obscure kind of player let us know let us know also what you would have done with the deck and if you agree or disagree or have some additional thoughts based on where truck took it as well good job truck thanks jimmy you know, Truck, if I want to buy these cards, you know where I should go? Where? 
Where Channelfireball.com you... slash command, or I would just enter <gasps> command at checkout. Real easy to put in that promo code at the very end. You're buying from local game stores. You're supporting local game stores. And not only that, you're getting great deals on sealed products, singles, and more. You know you're dealing with a trusted source and you're actually getting the cards you want. You're getting them in high quality. You're also getting sealed product. You're doing whatever you want. You can, you know, support real stores. That's what I love the most about the Channel Fireball Marketplace. The stores have had a real rough time after the pandemic. Games in stores and in shops has decreased so much the the foot traffic they will get for customers as well. So being able to support a store and you know, support our show at the same time, it's a dream come true. It's where I order all my cards, channelfireball.com slash command. And of course, when you get those cards, sleeve them up, Ultra Pro, shop.ultrapro.com, store.ultrapro.com, slash command. They have a new online store. There's so much stuff there. Playmats from way beyond, sets way back in the day that they didn't sell. They're actually now on sale. They've got new products with all of the sets. They also have holiday deals and all that stuff. So just check it out, or you can buy that Ultra Pro product from your local game store as well. All right, end step truck. Yeah. We talk about something cool outside the world of magic. Do you have anything for us? Oh, we're going to talk about something super cool. Oh. The coolest thing I know. Puns? You love making puns. They're pretty cool. The second coolest thing I know. There we go. My bro's at the office. So I, as you can tell, am not exactly in the best shape. But <laughs> a lot of the people from the office and I have been going to the gym a lot. And yeah. it has been great. And I just want to shout that out. Oh, like, cool. I mean, I'm just, look, who's the crew? Have you guys taken any selfies outside the gym that we can show in the end? So maybe the next time you go, you can take a selfie. We're going to do that, Jimmy. All right. You know what? Because, well, well, Jamie came up with this. Full credit to him. We got a little name for the crew called the Instant Speed Pump. The Instant Speed Pump. So good. Yeah, like giant growth. Like giant growth. Instant Speed Pump. Yeah. yeah. You're not working out at instant speed, though, right? You're, you're doing things in, in, in correct form and all that. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. Like, um, So right now, it's mainly me, Murph, Damon, and Arthur and Patrick go sometimes. But like, I know, at least for me, during COVID. Wait, wait, wait. The person that came up with the name, Jamie, he's not going? I ask him every day, but like, okay. <laughs> Great, but yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Let's not yeah. focus on the negatives here. Jamie, yeah. go to the gym. Just kidding. Offer's always open, Jamie. There you go. Yeah, but like during COVID, it was it was hard to go to the gym sometimes, right? Like, oh, yeah. I yeah. did not go to a public gym once during the pandemic. Yeah, but like now things are opening back up, you know, and like it's so much fun to go with your friends. So. I agree. I agree 100%. Being, have, having a group there that can encourage you and, and not make you feel bad, right? You're like, you're, who cares what level you're at? You're there all because you have your own individual goals and you're doing things for yourself. So you're not trying to compare. You're just with friends. You're having a good time and you're also focusing on the workouts. Oh, yeah. It's... And you can spot each other. Yeah. Like that, that's the best thing. I can go on a bench press now and I don't have to fear for my life. <laughs> it's great. Very cool. Uh, yeah, working out. Great end step is always something that I definitely need to pick up. Uh, Josh and I always talk about it, and then we go back to work. But hey. uh, you know what? If you can make time for work, you can make time for the gym too. Yeah, you can make things work out. Hey. hey. Big thanks to Truck Ty for coming on the show today, and a big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone, Arthur Meadowcroft, Sean Gillis, Damon Lenz, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nan, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Walder, Garava Galati, Jamie Block, Evan Limberger, and Rich Trafford, and how was it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. Big thanks to you all for watching. Make sure you also check out Jeffrey Palmer. He makes the Living Card animations that start our show on YouTube, and you can find them at Living Cards MTG on Twitter. Actually, all of us are on Twitter. I think we show the names and all that stuff. So go ahead and follow us. Say hello. Uh, and big thanks, Truck. You did a great job with the deck. Thanks, Jimmy. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>